a quick recap on electric power going to trains. As those of you in the city know, um, the trains are electrified. There's the bogey, there's the driver's cabin. It's very aerodynamic, not, but anyway. On top of it, as you know, there is a cable with what they call a pantograph, a spring-loaded connector that runs to the cable. That cable is at 1100 volts DC here in Sydney. That cable, importantly, cannot be made out of copper and cannot be made out of aluminium and cannot be made out of anything that conducts electricity well because they wear too quickly. And can you imagine the costs in changing Sydney's entire train network wiring every two years because it's worn out? Instead, they sacrifice conduction for wear resistance, and those cables are made out of steel. What they do, because steel is a poor conductor, above it they run a copper cable, a thick copper cable above it, thick to minimise conduction resistance, and then they just, you've probably seen them, little curly connections dropping all the way down perhaps going into the going onto the steel cable to give the um, electricity so the um, electricity does not need to run far along the steel that is how the Sydney trains work the old school trains were DC just with a variable resistor controlled by the driver that went to the motor Forgot to mention, 1100 volts positive on top, it's got to go somewhere. The rail lines are grounded to earth. They're basically connected to a um, copper bus bar going, um, six, uh, going two metres deep. I was going to use imperial measurements. Three metres deep into the ground where it's permanently wet. That's the earth. So positive, negative. Of course, the... Um, Trains, when they're coasting down an incline, aren't using power, they're generating electricity. Here we are with DC going back through the variable resistor. There's the motor. They, um, a motor in reverse is a generator. It feeds electricity back up to the um, line when it's coasting down an incline, which then comes along to the next train down the line, and that might need it there. So the trains coasting down an incline feed into it. Of course, the modern trams that we have in Sydney may well have a small battery inside them and battery storage. I don't know the exact design, but I do know that a lot of the modern trams have a small battery to store that regenerative energy, which means when they go across an intersection and there's a break in the conduction, the battery feeds in to get it over the intersection. So they store and reuse energy. The Millennium trains, I'm led to believe, don't run on DC, they run on AC. So the motors are AC. The voltage supply is still DC, and in here you've got a controller, triple VF controller that converts the DC current to AC to drive the motor. And converting the DC to AC with a variable voltage, variable frequency drive is far more energy efficient than converting the DC or controlling the train through DC with a traditional controller. This makes the AC train far more energy efficient as well. AC motors are a lot lighter than DC motors, which means the train is lighter, which makes it more energy efficient.